Welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVentures. Welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George, and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies, combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Skyguider Pro or the Star Adventurer. Okay, uh, here it is, month of March. Let's get started. Now, uh, for myself, man, it's been brutal. Uh, the New Moon crew and I, we have not been out for three months now. We're over three months. It's just been endless clouds, but let's get this out for those of you that uh, do have clear skies. First thing I want to talk about is uh, 12P Ponds Brooks, and I'm going to play this video for you. And you can watch up here, you have the date uh, starting off at March 2nd, which was actually yesterday. And I've got this just a little bit before 8 o'clock. And the reason being is because Ponds Brooks is there just right after sunset, and then it dives over the next 20 minutes below the horizon and, and even at this point which is 20 degrees above horizon it may already be too low for some of you but let's go ahead and get this started now uh, with this this is going to be your last chance to get this target in the northern hemisphere before it becomes a southern hemisphere target as you can see it, it's sitting pretty low here but just after sunset and for myself uh just after sunset i am able to get it and you can see it here there you go okay and so uh if you need to you know go back and uh, replay that clip there but let's get started with the other targets that I'd like to uh, bring up. So first off, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at our eastern horizon. And on the eastern horizon, let's kick this up to around 3 o'clock in the morning. And as you can see here, across the north into the southeast, the Milky Way is starting to lay across the horizon. So um, there's your chance to start getting it. Uh, this will come up and, and start to arc a little bit more as the night goes on. There's 4 o'clock in the morning. You see a nice, beautiful arch. I've never been able to uh, get to a location where I've had the, uh, the foreground to be able to do this. But uh, if you have the chance, uh, right now it's looking, you know, 3, 4 o'clock, you can get a nice beautiful arch of the Milky Way laying across the, uh, the eastern sky there. So with that, let's move on to some other targets here. And the first one I'm going to jump over to is going to be the Orion Nebula. And uh, let's see here, we need to back this up. Let's see here, just after dark, which for me is about 8 o'clock, you're going to see the Orion Nebula is right here, and this is going to dive quickly. So there's 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and you can see here we're a little bit, you know, here's 20 degrees, here's the 30 degree line. Uh, azimuth, you know, uh, coming up above the, uh, the horizon there. And for myself, this is too low. So depending on what you've got, but for myself, once it gets below 30, it really gets uh, into the thick of the atmosphere and it starts to fall apart. So if you have not been able to get the Orion Nebula, to which I have not been able to this entire winter season, here's your last chance. And if you have a couple clear nights, you could pull off a couple hours and then the next night a couple hours before this is gone. But here's your last chance before you uh, have to say, you know, goodbye to... Uh, to the Orion Nebula, and then uh, taking a look at M42 here. Let's see here. So M42, and whoops, that's M4. M42. Okay, here we go. Uh, so here we go. Uh, working off of a crop sensor camera. 
Okay, there we go. And so here you have the Orion Nebula, and I'm set this up at 400. That's way too much. So there you go. There's 300 millimeters, and this is obviously the website Telescopius, telescopius.com. And you can see the Orion Nebula and the Running Man just above it. Here's the uh, Horse Head and the Flaming Star, uh, the Flame Nebula, not Flaming Star, Flame Nebula. So depending on what you want to do with this, but... Uh, you know, 300 millimeters on up, and then you can fill that in. Let's take a look here. If we drop this to 100, you could actually frame all of this. And I would probably, and I know that Samyang lens of 135, 135 millimeters works nicely. And you could set this up here, or rotate this a bit. There you go. Okay, and there you go. You can flint, you can, you know, Frame this all up. There's the three stars of Orion's belt, the uh, Flame Nebula, Horse Head, and the Orion and the Running Man. But you can get that all together right there in that spot. So there you go. Let's jump back over to Stellarium. Let me start back at 8 o'clock. And so anyway, that was the Orion Nebula last chance before you say goodbye to that one. So uh, next up, let's take a look at the Spaghetti Nebula. Spaghetti Nebula is sitting really high in the sky right now. Uh, it will sit up there all night. I personally have never been successful with getting the Spaghetti Nebula. And I wish my sky would clear because you can see here, there's, there's the Spaghetti. It's sitting really high in the night sky. And as the night went on, let's see here. There it is. And so as the night goes on, you could get it for those first few hours of the night. And so this one, you absolutely have to have a, uh, a astro-modded camera. I don't know if somebody's pulled it off. I've never been able to, even with my Astro modded. So let's take a look here. Spaghetti Nebula. There we go. Spaghetti Nebula. Yeah, let's slide down here. And there's the spaghetti. And you can see how big this is. We're set up at 135 millimeters on a crop sensor. And you can see how big this is. You could take this a little bit uh, closer, but uh, if you happen to be one of the people with the 135 F2 Samyang lens, that might work out really well to help pull this in, and then you know combine that with an infrared, uh, you know, astro modded camera. So that could work out really well for you. So there you go, Spaghetti Nebula. Good luck to you. I've never been able to pull it off. Maybe somebody out there can. Let's jump back over here, and we are going to jump to C31, which is the flaming star. It's right next door to it. It's a nice bright magnitude of 6 on there. And uh, again, sitting nice high in the sky. This is starting out. Let me move this up to 8 o'clock. There we go, because 7 o'clock was definitely way too early in the night. But you can see we're up at 70 degrees, between 70 and 75 degrees azimuth there and so that would work out really well to go after the flaming star nebula nice and bright astro Mata definitely would help with this one and let's jump back over here c31 let's punch that in and here we go flaming star nebula again 135 millimeters and you can see it's got all of this filling it in there again on a crop sensor of 24 by 16. Astromod is definitely going to help though, but with that brighter magnitude, uh, you would be able to uh, you know pull this one off with a stock camera. Okay, let's jump back over here and let's see here. We're going to go to Markarian's chain M84, and this is a sequence of galaxies let me back this out so you can see where we are um, this is a sequence of galaxies now obviously here's the earth so with this one here you're going to need this one to be a late night target let me move this out you can see how it's climbing in the night sky there we go in the southeast so with this one you can see i'm sitting around the midnight hour 
So somewhere around there is going to be a good time to go in for Markarian's chain. And you can just see there's this whole sequence of stuff in there, tons. Um, not the normal target that I've gone after before, but uh, just so many of these galaxies pop out that uh, it actually works really well. And so with this one, let's uh, jump over to our telescope, yes, again. And with Markarian's chain, let me see if Markarian's chain group, there we go. Apologize for the sniffles. Okay, and let's see here. You can see some of these galaxies. Let me zoom this in a little bit. Let's see. Take this to 300 millimeters. Now, this is kind of an interesting one because I'm at 300. Let's go ahead and rotate this diagonally. There we go. And you can see so many of these galaxies. Let's take this to 200. There we go, and we can fit more of them in. So there's just a lot in there. Uh, they do pop out really well. They show up better than what you're seeing on here. But Markarian's chain is kind of cool to go after. And then with that is, let me see if it'll bring it up. There's Copeland's eyes. Uh, let's see, Copeland. Let's see, there's a set of galaxies, and I'm, if I'm going correctly, I think they call them Copeland's Eyes. It's a couple set of uh, galaxies that looks really good. Anyway, you can, s uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can find that. Copeland's Eyes. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. Eyes galaxies is this one it let's see and Markarian's chain yeah, let's see the eyes galaxy NGC 4435 and NGC 4438 let me grab this we'll jump over here okay and there we go okay let's zoom this in now um, i'm going to take this up to 600 millimeters but you can see all of these galaxies in here so with markarian's chain it's it's an interesting thing you, you could shoot wider pull in more of the galaxies you can shoot in closer at 600 millimeters it allows the galaxies to show up a little bit more you can see them they're, they're just peppered all over the place here but this is one that uh i kind of passed a lot of times on but you know if you have it and i uh, might be interested go for it. it it actually uh i was happier with it than what i anticipated okay next up let's see here we can jump over to stellarium let's back this out here okay and we're gonna go to the Leo triplet, NGC uh, 3628. There we go. Let's zoom in here. And this one, you got the hamburger galaxy, the Leo triplet, Leo triplet. So you've got these uh, these two galaxies here, and then this one. This is kind of cool. And the hamburger, if you've got clear, uh, stable skies at night where there's you know minimal to no twinkle of the stars. You can get the uh, the hamburger patty through the middle to really show up well. Let's jump over to Telescopius so you can see it there. So NGC 3628. And here we go. So there's the hamburger galaxy and the other two stars of the Leo triplet. And so you got that there. 600 millimeters works out pretty well. Um, you know, it's it's kind of a cool one. I, I, I've i enjoyed shooting this one. And then the last one that I'm going to throw out there for you this month. Let me back this out. F3 to bring up the search window is going to be IC2177. And this is... The Seagull Nebula, we're gonna to have to back this up in the night so we can get this a little higher. So here we go, we're at eight o'clock, you can see the south. 
And this is where the Seagull Nebula is. And this is a combination of both reflection and emission nebula all within this area. And then uh, you can see magnitude is 6.97, so it's not too much darker uh, than what you know the human eye can see under really good dark sky conditions. But this is one that you could go after, and you don't have to have a uh, a uh, astromotted camera for it. So there you go for the month. Um, as I said, you're gonna. I would suggest get out there and get that 12P Pons Brooks comet uh, it's your last chance to get it before uh, it disappears over the horizon and becomes a southern target and then uh, from there you got the milky way showing up at 3 a.m laying on the uh, eastern horizon uh, m42 last chance to say goodbye to the orion nebula and all that good stuff that's packed in there uh, spaghetti nebula sitting high in the night sky uh, along with the uh, flaming star nebula not too far of course, uh, Markarian's Chain, if you've never gone after it and you want to do something different, check that one out. There's just such a peppering of, uh, of uh, galaxies within that area. Of course, the uh, Leo Triplet, and then uh, finally the Seagull Nebula. So there you have it. I hope that uh, you know gives you some things to go after. And then just uh, one last time we'll put in here, this is 12P Pons Brooks. This is a 71-year comet that's coming around, or getting ready to leave us again or head for the Southern Hemisphere. So again, check this one out if you get the chance. It, uh, it's up there just after sunset, chasing the, uh, the, the sun over the horizon. So there you go. Till next time, I would love to see you at our Facebook group, AstroVenture DSLR. And until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.